Hello everyone and welcome to the next episode of Melon Talks. Here I'm going to be trying to resume the series a bit. Um, it's going to be a little different. It's going to be a little uh, uh, more spaced out than it has been, but going to try to continue to create content. So for this one, I'm going to talk about the practice tool. All right, so we're going to start off this video with some big exaggeration. Practice tool sucks. Okay, so now don't take this too out of context. Uh, it is good for certain things, but just not good for what I wanted. So when I heard about the practice tool, I thought, wow, this would be a great supplement to a great supplement to how I theory craft, right? There are certain things that it's very, very difficult to theory craft, um, things that take into uh, account time, things that take into account number of hits, stuff like that. So I was really excited to be able to try things out specifically, specifically for Leandri's damage. Um, unfortunately, in the practice tool, you, the, the dummy you spawn has a fixed amount of health, MR, and armor, and you cannot change that. So, of course, any, any calculation with Leandries against a target with 10,000 health is going to be blown massively out of proportion. So, it's very, very sad to me that I can't use the practice tool for that. Of course, I, I could get some friends, I could get people to help me. Uh, and they could modify that as well, but um, it just doesn't fulfill the fantasy that I had of the practice tool. So stay tuned. We will get more more information from the practice tool later, but this preliminary video that I've been planning and I really wanted to get it out just to let you guys know that I'm doing this again. Unfortunately, we don't have a lot of results to say today. Okay, so I tested out two things in the practice tool today. One is something that has been creeping up on me recently and it's about combos for burst okay so uh you know if, if you guys have been with like following my twitter like chatting with me on discord or just watching my stream you probably have heard me talk about the pros and how they play zyra specifically their combos when they burst someone down very often they will do e w w r q or maybe q r that part is not as important to me. The, but specifically, the part that bothers me is that they spawn two E-plants, okay? And the problem with this is that they're they're redundant and they're of short range. So you only want one E-plant. You only need one E-plant to get off the slow, but after that, you just want Q-plants because the Q-plants have uh, much, much longer range and so they can get out more damage. But then I started thought, thinking to myself, you know, maybe I'm looking at this the wrong way. Maybe if it's not, maybe it's not so much like damage in a team fight. Maybe they're really going for burst damage because if you E W R Q W, your second plant doesn't spawn for a fair amount later. Maybe you're losing out on that damage from that one plant until you get that Q off. So I said to myself, all right, let's check this out in the practice tool. So as you can see, um, we have me going to do two different combos, one on the right, one on the left, and it's almost the exact same amount of damage. One plan auto attack is, is so, so small um, that it's, it's really not a big deal. What is a big deal, however, is your plant's just not attacking anymore because they left the range of the E plant. So to back this up, or this, this result just backs up my previous thought of yes, it is still better to only use one E plant. You get one, basically one fewer plant auto attack, uh, almost exactly one fewer plant auto attack if you do it this way. And really you're gonna get more than that from the extra range from your Q. All right, so the difference in damage is so minimal uh, in a perfect scenario for the other situation, right? Uh, this dummy's not moving. In reality, they would be moving, okay? Uh, and then you'd be getting those extra uh, auto attacks from that Q, all right? Not to mention you can choose where the Q plant spawns, right? You're not going to put the Q plant on the E plant always. Usually, uh, if they're running away, you're going to put the Q plant further away. If they're running towards you, you can put the Q plant closer to you. So really, you get more choice, uh, more damage, and you don't sacrifice almost any burst. So still do the combo I talk about. Don't do what the pros do, all right? They're very talented League of Legends players, but they don't know everything about Zyra. Of course, neither do I, but I'm not gonna talk about that next. Or, no, 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 I'm not gonna talk about that now. Next, what I'm gonna talk about is Thunderlords versus Deathfire Touch. Again, another thing that has to do with time. 
And uh, so, you know, the, the whole debate is always, okay, Thunderlords is better for laning phase. Thun this is this is pre this video. This is what we have established or what I have established and hope that you believe me is Thunderlords is better for laning phase. Thunderlords is better for burst damage. Yeah. And then Deathfire is better for AoE damage and it's better in the late game. All right. And that's pretty much I don't think that's disputed. But I was curious, okay, how much does this affect it in uh, for two items? All right, so what I did is I went two items. I think, uh, yeah, I went two items. You can see on the screen, I don't remember. Uh, and then I did two identical combos. Uh, and one of them, the Q plant is a little farther away. So the other one looks like it's two E plants, but it's not. Uh, both of them have one E and one Q plant. So same combo, same auto attack, same same duration, same start time. I was curious, okay, how does how does the Thunderlords and Deathfire touch with two items? Even in, in an absurdly long fight, a fight that goes on until the plants die, which is never gonna happen um, um, in a one-on-one -on -one fight anyway. Uh, even in an absurdly long fight, it is almost identical, the damage that it does. And of course, in a burst situation, uh, even with two items, uh, in a burst situation, of course, not even with two items, of course the Thunderlords is gonna be significantly higher, uh, as, as you can see here. All right, um, so again, this just reemphasizes what we already knew. Thunderlords is better for burst, Thunderlords is better for early game, Deathfire is better for damage over time, late game. It, not even really damage over time, as you can see here. It's just late game and AoE. Okay, so make that trade-off, uh, make that decision with that trade-off in mind when you are choosing your masteries. I'm gonna be going Thunderlords to create almost every game mid lane Zyra, and literally every game is support Zyra, all right? There's no reason to get uh, Deathfire Touch as support Zyra, and you only get Deathfire Touch as, as mid Zyra if that's your thing, if you're gonna specifically play with that play style, but I do not recommend it although it can work in cer certain circumstances, all right? So that's, these are the kind of things that I, you know, uh, wanted to talk about, make a video a little bit with the practice tool, kind of get used to it. In my future practice tool videos, we're gonna have a lot more information and I'm going to get people to help me so I don't have to use this stupid 10,000 health, 100 armor, 100 MR Teemo dummy, as good as it feels to kill the Teemo, all right? So I'm back, I'm gonna start making these videos again. Uh, obviously I'm much busier, so there's not gonna be the video as often, but hope you guys enjoy the video and may your enemies feel the thorns embrace. Also, sell up, this is where I work now.